a good week. You know, I enjoyed it. Um, it was uh, a good tour. What I like about doing several nights in a row, one of the things anyway, is that I get more and more into it. Just like with anything, you get warmed up, but I also start getting more into that mindset. So like every night when I leave the stage, automatically I'm thinking of a whole bunch of stuff that I didn't say. And, um, and even on the last night, which was the best show, I think, it was, uh, um, you know, the, the fans were asking me not to close, which was the first, you know, usually they, <laughs> this was the first they were, um, you know, no, no, keep going, keep going. And, they, and, you know, and I think I went like an hour and I, it felt like it was time to wrap. But um, automatically afterwards, I'm thinking of, oh, I didn't talk about this or this. And it inspires me like to create new jokes and new materials. So that's cool, you know, because I like being inspired. Um, having said that, I don't know when I'll do another tour again. I don't know, I don't really plan ahead. I go with the flow and uh, we have a possible, uh, we're working on something coming up, but um, you know, the grass is always greener. So when I'm on the road, I'm like, man, you know what? I'm looking forward to being home. And uh, when I'm home, I don't really look forward to leaving ever, but going on tour or whatever, or even bookings sound like a better idea when I'm home. Even if it's just like a one booking for a month or whatever, like the day before I leave, I always go through these cycles of uh, personal inner struggle where I'm like, oh, why did I take this booking? I don't wanna pack and have to leave tomorrow and be off my schedule. And that's just some kind of um, neurotic thing that I always do. <laughs> But I enjoyed um, doing the, the stand-up. One thing that was uh, fun doing so many days in a row and interesting was seeing how the same jokes will get different reaction. Even if told the same way, sometimes total different reactions from different crowds. And also, sometimes if I think that people are not being as responsive as I would expect them to be at certain jokes, Sometimes afterwards, when we're doing the meet and greet, the fans will specifically tell me that that was their favorite part. You know, like uh, when I said, uh, I think it was yesterday or the day before, and I was just like, hey, if there's a secret to doing this, it's not giving a fuck. And like nobody said anything. And I was like, well, you know, luckily for me, that comes naturally. And like no one even said anything. And I was like, that's okay. They don't have to laugh. They, they think this is transitional. But I thought there was a joke there if they got it. But then afterwards, the guy um, that you were recording in the uh, um, green room afterwards, he was saying, man, that's why I like, I really connected with you when you said you don't give a fuck, man. That's like me. And I get a lot of that sometimes where they point out the stuff that I thought might have went over their head. Interesting. Um, do you argue? I don't argue. <laughs> <laughs> but you were tweaking your stuff to get a, a better reaction. Yeah, absolutely. That's part of going up every night, too, finding uh, different ways. And a lot of times, and usually, it's tweaking it to see what different results it gets. Sometimes I may tweak it just for my own entertainment. Just like in the ring, it's the same thing. I hope that fans will appreciate if I put like different twists or different combinations together, but I'm also doing that for me. Right, uh, but if you can argue that you're doing it- I'm not arguing. Them, and that shows that like uh, you, you care about them and uh, are probably passionate to a small degree. Well, I mean, I obviously- you say over the last week you've become more of a passionate person? <laughs> I don't know about that. Um, I have- <laughs> I don't know about that. I would say that um, I'm doing something right now that I haven't done in several months. Therefore, I am more involved with what I'm doing. I'm a professional and uh, when I do something, you know, um, I often, have expectations that I have to deliver and that's what being a professional is about. Um, I'm doing this right now and then if I don't do it again for, you know, six months or something, then uh, when I do it again, I'll be just as passionate about it then. But in between, I may not be. If I'm not doing that, if I'm doing something else, then I'm just putting my energy into that. Um, right now, <clears throat> 
Part of the reason that I'm so not passionate about very much is that my expectations of life have been lowered so much on top of my normal stoic balance of my energy. On top of that, I had a pretty trying uh, beginning of the year because I'm like semi-retiring from wrestling, doing it as little as possible, like everything else. But uh, you know, you have plans, and plans in life don't always work out the way you want it to. Uh, I wrestled my whole career, and then thought afterwards that I'd be able to chill more time uh, with my wife, with my dog. Um, that's not the way it's gonna be. The wife left, the dog died, my dad died, and I went, shoo, I had like some really low moments that were really challenging for me to overcome. And I did a lot of drinking. And I would just bring that up on stage. And I would, you know, I'd go up on stage and I'd say, I gotta warn you. Um, and this was in April. I said, I gotta warn you. Uh, I started drinking early before tonight's show. I, um, Was that real? Yeah. And, and I said, you know, I, I started drinking uh, in February of last year, because I've been telling that joke for two years. And that. <laughs> <laughs> but it was real. It was real. I mean, I was <laughs> drinking quite a bit. <laughs> yeah. So, you know, it's, it's cool to be able to bring stuff on in, into your, you know, because I'm genuine and honest. And so, you know, that's what I use for material is my life. Right. No. But uh, I would say you coming into this week, and I don't want to sell out from an artistic standpoint, but coming into this movie, um, I was the camera guy. You might have been, I feel like, uh, being the infractionable RVD at the beginning of the week. And I think through passion and showing your changes, that that's, by the end of the movie, it's going to be a powerful thing. But in order to do that, um, I do need you to be passionate here <laughs> at the end of the movie. <laughs> well, I mean... Maybe I, you know, passionate to you might mean something different than passionate means to me. Like when I think about passionate, I think about something that like just like boils through your blood and like, you know, it's, it burns inside of you till you get it out. I'm not like that about it. You know what I mean? I enjoy, I'm passionate about being me and I enjoy entertaining people. I enjoy making people laugh. I have a sense of humor. I don't take myself or anything seriously Ever. People that know me know I'm never serious. I'm sarcastic at best. Right. And, you know, I mean, if that's passionate. I've been a couple times where we, with the cameras on and on, and you're like super heated, super getting into something. And, I, and then you say, you lean back and you're like, yeah, I guess I'm passionate about that. I'm passionate about sharing insight, and for me, this is a way to do it. I feel like I have a lot of life experience, and I feel like I have, I feel like I'm the best at being me. And so when people can learn from that, and, and I don't force my values or my beliefs on anybody, I'm not a leader because I don't expect anyone to follow me, but if people are asking me about something that I feel like I have a lot to talk about, then I am pretty passionate about my beliefs. I can say that. I have my beliefs and I'm passionate about it, enough to, uh, to debate with somebody that's trying to counter my beliefs with their beliefs, sure. Comedy is one way uh, that I do that. Um, this is going to be my last question for potentially the movie. Uh, uh, when you said that you're the best at being the real me, uh, who is the real RVD? Well, uh, I am this spirit that's inside of this bag of flesh. That's who the real, and even though RVD isn't my birth given name, I know that that refers to me, to this person. So I own that, I accept that, that, that is me. However, everybody has their own perspective of everybody, even you. Like if I'm only around you for say six hours a day and I don't know you the rest of the time, I'm automatically gonna be filling in blanks and imagining what you're, you know, thinking about you all day. <laughs> um, but people do that, and when you're a character on TV, 
you know, I mean, uh, these people all want to, you know, you go in the, in the, they want to go down south, they want to think that I'm hunting ducks, you know, like, I bet you, yeah, let's take them out hunting, let's take them fishing, last thing I want to do. Most people probably think, you know, like, oh, you're going to Pittsburgh, are you a Steelers fan? I don't watch any sports. I watch MMA, and that's it. I don't even watch wrestling. I don't, uh, I don't watch um, race cars, you know, and I don't know, um, I don't know anything about, uh, you know, like cars. I don't know the difference between a Pontiac and an Oldsmobile, a Chevrolet. I have no idea what I'm looking at. There's just certain things that must not interest me because I don't retain any information and don't spend any time towards that. And the fact that maybe 98% of the other people do is fine with me, but they're gonna imagine that I relate to them more than I do in other areas because they're allowed to fill in those blanks. I'm the only one that really knows what RVD is like 24 seven, and it's not even describable because to me, it's the norm. Do you find that kind of crazy though that people know more about your past than you do? Or remember it, more specifically? No, because um, like I said, there's a certain amount of fiction. I think he had the money in the bank guy, when he's like, hey, sign up to you one. And uh, you were like, I don't know what fucking year that was. And he's the, like, oh, 2006. Yeah, I mean, they remember like certain facts and, and, and things, that, you know, how many times have I had championship belts or, or who did I wrestle in this town? Some of that stuff, I don't know, but that's just like trivia. That doesn't mean they know more about me at all. And there's a certain amount of a uh, fantasy that's involved. You know, I um, have this crazy girl on uh, Twitter that, you know, thinks she's in love with me. She doesn't know me. You know what I mean? But to her, she thinks, you know, she loves me more than anybody else. No, you don't even, it's an it's a imagination in your mind. You know, if somebody is around you all the time and they see you at your worst and at your best and they really love you, that means so much more, it's so more real than people that love a character that you play. Um, and, and, and that is my life, and I'm always working uh, against that. The people at the bar tonight, they wanted to talk about wrestling, and they want to talk about what's going on today with wrestling, what happened at Survivor Series. I just don't have any interest in that. I don't want to offend them, but I have no idea what they're talking about or who they're talking about. I don't even know a lot of these new wrestlers, and it's just not part of my life. Um, but they don't understand that, and that's fine because they just need to know the RVD that's their hero, um, not the real guy that takes the garbage out, you know, every, every uh, Tuesday night. That's a real person. How did you lose interest in something that you've done your entire life? That's just it. It's, I mean, because you've done it your entire life. Yeah, yeah, and I mean, when I, I mean, I assume you're talking about wrestling when you say losing interest. It, no, I mean, it's just something that um, I just have had enough of. I've been a professional wrestler for more years in my life than I haven't been a professional wrestler. One through 18, I wasn't actually a pro wrestler. I was a kid. My entire adult life, I've been a pro wrestler. So when I get to not wrestle and I get to actually be home and go to parties that I'm invited to or go to meetings or find out that my years in wrestling equates to value, whether it's in the movie business or doing stand-up comedy or other interests that I wanna do, when I find out that the hard work that I've put in has a payoff because I've inspired and I've impacted people's lives that are in different positions around the world, I'd rather network and, and, and take uh, and utilize some of those pathways to do other things that I might be interested in because I don't want to put the boots on and go in the ring and wrestle. I do it sometimes and it's for the business and when I'm in the ring showing off, connecting with my fans, I do enjoy it, uh, but it's not something I look forward to and I don't look forward to a whole lot. I'm, I'm pretty much uh, skeptically optimistic about everything. I take it as it comes. Um, I don't believe a lot's gonna happen until it actually happens. That way if it doesn't happen, there's no heartbreak. That's uh, through years of experience of getting my hopes up and uh, you know getting the carpet pulled out from underneath me and finding a way to be okay with that. You care less. 
before we, you know, um, something worth mentioning before we end this is um, I feel like my vision is almost 100%. Like as I'm sitting here right now, I noticed that it's not. A few minutes ago when I was in, when I was in my room, I was thinking, you know what? I would say I'm at 100%, but right now I notice when I move my head a little bit, it's still uh, a little bit blurry before it focuses. But, you know, um, I didn't know I was going to be doing this whole tour with a concussion. I think we made it through, and uh, I, I'm sure in the next couple of days that I'll be back to normal. I have like about three weeks roughly until my next scheduled match. I do plan on seeing a doctor in the meantime and having him clear me before I go to that match. Uh, I am taking the whole concussion uh, injury seriously enough to think that it's definitely something I should follow up on. Um, at the same time, if I'm fine and then uh, and I don't make it, then you know I could see where I'd kind of forget to go because I feel fine and that happens. But uh, I'm gonna try not to let that happen because it seems like it'd probably be a good idea to check my brain out and <laughs> figure, out, figure out why the nerves that control my eyes have fucked with me for the last 10 days or so. Yeah. Uh, did that kind of like freak you out, that prospect? Is the, you said you're not scared of anything, but is the fear of going and finding out something fearful of you? No, because I, I'm okay with the consequences. So I don't, I can't imagine how it would impact me in a, in a large way, either way. If they say, if they tell me, hey, your brain's fine, you know, you've got nothing, I'll be like, wow, really? Well, that's kind of cool. If they say, oh, yeah, we can tell, you know, you've gotten beat up a lot or whatever, I'll be like, oh, yeah, well, I have, you know. And if they say, holy fuck, you know, you're fucked, then I'd, you know, I'd just be like, really? So, uh, <laughs> so I should take it easy? I really don't see, you know, I don't see me getting excited about it either way. Uh, one thing is, uh, you know, w with the WWE, um, if you have concussion damage, now it's harder to get in. Like if you haven't been in there, I've heard of people being turned away just for having concussion. I don't know if that means they have lasting damage or if they've just reported that they've even had one. I've heard different things, but most of it's secondhand. But for me, even if I don't go back to WWE, a lot of my value is that the fans believe that I can go back to WWE and that I'm just a couple days from going there. Every pay-per-view, the fans believe that I'm going to be there. Right now, uh, you know, everyone thought I was going to be a Survivor Series last night. They think I'm going to be at Royal Rumble, and they believe that. And even if I tell them, like, no, I haven't talked to anybody, like, yeah, we'll see you there. And that's always been the case. But that's also part of what gives me my value, and, and that's why... I can uh, justify a fee that makes it worth my while when I do take bookings. And if everybody knew that I wasn't going back, that would affect that. Then all of a sudden, my, the value of RVD, the semi in the doorway of WWE, can go back whenever he wants kind of guy. If that became someone that wasn't wrestling anymore, then uh, people would... Uh, the, then I could see where my value to them, the promoters or the bookers or the fans, could go down some. Um, but if the value doesn't go down to me and it's not worth it for me to get booked for less, then that's the way it is because nobody can set your own value on what anything is worth to you except for you. What, uh, are you going to be affected at all in that WWE door just Inevitably, with time and age, does close? I can't imagine. I mean, I affect it as far as, like, there'll be, like, a, a closed door. It'll be like, oh, well, there's something I can't do. But um, I can't imagine any consequences are really going to throw me for a loop, you know. After what I've been through in my life and the challenges that I've been through, it really takes a lot to, to rock me now. I really believe that. It takes a hell of a lot to uh, uh, to get me to you know to knock me off of my horse, so to say. But can you have can you knock out the bad thoughts, but still keep from getting excited? Um, again, what excited is to you 
what you know as excited, the feelings, the emotions you experience when you say you're excited, it's probably not the same thing as I feel when I'm saying excited or when I relate to the word, you know? Just like with, with pot, people think like, oh my God, dude, I know when I smoke, like I can't talk for four hours. Nobody should be smoking and driving. Well, guess what? When they smoke, they're not feeling the same thing that you are. These people that smoke 24 seven, guess what? They're functional smokers. So for you to think that your experience with it is exactly what they experience, that's a flawed way of thinking. And I know that from experience, but other people don't know that. They don't, they'll say, RVD, do you ever get like, like really fucked up and then go out in front of people? I don't get really fucked up, not off of pot. And, but to other people, they'll say, oh my God, dude, oh man, I smoked half a joint, what did you smoke? You don't even know, did you have a sativa or an indica? How many people smoked it with you? They don't even know, and they could be, you know, it could be something that's like fucking 11% THC or 25% THC. There's so many factors, and people don't know. People can only relate to their own experiences. That's why it takes somebody special, I think, at least with a different level of understanding, to be able to reach out and make people feel like they are connected with their own experiences, because I feel like more than often, that's not the case. If someone says they're hurt and they ask me if I'm hurt, what do you mean? I can work, I can wrestle, I'm, I'm not hurt. What, do I feel pain? Fuck yeah, I feel pain. But it's not the same way you feel pain.